Hello and welcome back to my channel So Amelia where I talk about making a handmade wardrobe for me and my children. This week I'm going to be talking about all of the things that I made in May. I just thought I'd start by saying there has been a change since the last video. I finally got my post lockdown haircut which was very exciting and I decided to go for a bit of a change with the fringe and a short bob or a, you know this is a bob shoulder shoulder length anyway which is a lot shorter than it had been and I'm really enjoying it and in line with a summery haircut the summer has indeed arrived which is so exciting so I am finally getting to wear a lot more of my summery dresses and makes which is great um, I will talk about what I'm wearing now a little bit later on in the video so stay tuned for that. The first make I'm going to show you is my Bromby skirt by Megan Nielsen. Um, as for all of these patterns today, if you want any more details on the sizes and things, please do go back and look at my May plans video where I talked a lot more about the sizes that these patterns come in and the details about sort of how I was going to make them and fabrics and that kind of thing. So do go and watch that if you're interested in more of those sorts of details. But this is the pattern cover for the Brumby skirt. I'll just turn it around. So you can see there are three versions. There's the short length with the pockets, there's the midi length with the pockets, and then there's kind of this length here, which is a knee length-ish without the pockets. So what I did was I made version B with the pockets, but I made it in the length of version C. And I'll hold up my skirt. So you can see it's in this really lovely um, twill, apologies, it looks very, it has been ironed. I made it in this navy twill from Minerva Crafts. Uh, it's a really lovely cotton twill, it's not too heavy, it's, but it hangs really nicely. The thing I love about the Bromby skirt is the waistband. I don't know if you can see from this, but it is a slightly curved waistband, so it really fits around your waist so beautifully. I'll put a photo up here of me wearing it uh, during Me Made May. I wore it quite a lot, but it has become a wardrobe staple, and I think it will into the summer months as well, with some little um, tops, like camis and things. But the waistband just sits so beautifully around your waist. Uh, that it really is the main um, measurement that I looked at when I decided what size to make this skirt in. I made it a size 12 which is a waist of 30 inches which is exactly my waist and it just fits like a glove. It really is lovely. The hip is a size is a 40 inch hip and that again fits me perfectly. Um, the finished garment measurements though the waist is 30 inches and you can see from the way that it it's a it's got a lot of room here and it just hangs beautifully so the waist really is the key measurement for this skirt. Uh, but I do love the way that sits. The pattern has instructions for how to create an exposed zip, uh, but I prefer invisible zips, just I prefer the look. I think it looks cleaner, and in this kind of fabric, I just wanted a more classic look. So I did, you can see from the back there, I did put in an invisible zip, uh, which I, I just I prefer in this one. I think if I were to make it in a denim fabric, um, something a bit like that, I might do an exposed zip, just something different but I think with this twill I wanted it to just look a bit more classic. I lined the waistband with some fabric that you'll see in one of my later makes in the video uh, which is a beautiful cotton lawn that I had left over from another project. So I think that's all that's to be said. The pattern is such a lovely one to make up. It is definitely one of my favourite skirt patterns. I've made it several times now. I just think that it all comes together beautifully and I really like the way that the waists are sewn uh, I really like the way the pockets are sewn into the waist seam and they're huge, they are so big and um, perfect for collecting stones and sticks and flowers and things on walks at the park with my children. So that was my first make, the Brumby skirt. Now the weather here has been really awful during May, it was so so cold, I was wearing all my winter things and I realised that I didn't really have very many sweaters and warm top layers to go with my skirts and things. So I saw a lovely remnant come up. Uh, at the rag shop for some Mind the Maker Jacquard jersey and so I thought I'm going to go for it. I'm going to get that and I'm going to see if I can squeeze a jumper out of it. So I made this pattern here, the Deer and Doe On Day sweater. Now it comes as a really sweet top with a collar or as a jumper here with the scoop neck 
uh, and the cropped length here, which is what I wanted because I tend to wear high-waisted jeans and skirts, so I prefer a cropped length. So here is the sweater, so you can see it's a lovely khaki colour. I wasn't sure how that would look on me actually, but I'll insert a picture up here and you can see. I was really, really pleased with it. Um, it sits really beautifully uh, on and I do like the crop length, although I think I would make it an inch perhaps longer next time, just so it can um, sit quite nicely on top of my jeans um, or over my jeans rather than on top of them. Um, I don't really like showing the drift or anything else so I'd like it to sit slightly lower for next time. So I haven't talked about this pattern before because this is kind of one that I made on the fly when I realised I didn't have enough warm clothes, um, particularly with trying to wear me made items for me made May. Um, so this starts at a bust of 31 and a half inches uh, and a waist of 23 and a half inches and hips of 33 and three quarter inches and goes up to a bust of 41 inches, a waist of 33 inches, and hips of 43 and a quarter inches. So that's sizes 34 to 46. Not a huge size range, and it is a very close fitting jumper. So I decided to go with a size 40 at the bust, grading out to a size 42 at the waist. And because it was a cropped sweater, I didn't really worry about the hip measurement so much. Um, not really important so I did grade from a 40 to a 42 and I really like the way that it fits me um, it fits me perfectly I'm really glad I graded it though because it, it is a tight tight it's a snug fit like not too snug <laughs> but I wouldn't have wanted it to be any smaller and um, yeah I think I would definitely make it again I think what I'd like to do next time is I'd like to make the long sleeve version again because I really like a cropped sweater but I would possibly make it with a slightly less scoop neckline. I'd possibly use the neckline from the short sleeved version um, just so that I can wear it over a few more dresses and things. I think the scoop neck is lovely on its own, but when you need to layer things up in the winter, um, it needs to be a bit warmer. So that was the Dare and Doe on day sweater. The next thing that I made in May was the Davenport dress by Friday Pattern Company. When I saw this dress um, come out, I knew I really wanted to make it. I love everything about it in terms of the ruffles, the sleeve detail, the waist, the fact that there are no fastenings, all of it. I thought it was such a lovely dress pattern. So I'll hold up. This is the one that I made. So you can see it's got a lovely elasticated neck here, which means that there are no fastenings, there are no zips, there are no buttons, nothing. So it is a really beginner friendly pattern I think and Friday Pattern Company have done such a good job of the pattern instructions, they're super easy to follow but Chelsea has also recorded a sew along on her YouTube channel which I'll put in the description box below where she really walks you through every step of the pattern which is so helpful so if you're someone looking to try out the pattern and you're a beginner sewist I think this would be such a great dress. Um, so yes it has an elasticated neckline and then on the sleeves you can see there are these little ruffles and then the sleeves, for me, they're about bracelet length. Uh, I tend to push them up slightly to be sort of three quarter length, especially now we're going into the summer. And then they're finished on the end with um, elastic. And then there's a little bit of fabric to make sort of a bit of a ruffle on the end of that sleeve as well. The waistband is, is a tie. So you can see there's some lovely pockets here sewn into the skirt, really deep pockets, which is great. And then there is a tie at the waist so that you can really cinch it in. I did go ahead and make the small in that. My measurements really for Friday Pattern Company put me in a medium in my top half across to a large in the bottom at my hips. Um, but I do find that, particularly in this dress, which did say it was slightly oversized, I sized down and I used the finished measurements as a guide for which size to make. And this fits really, really nicely. I'll put a picture up here. Um, I definitely wouldn't have made it any bigger. And because of the waist tie, it, it cinches in really nicely and it flows nicely across the hips. I don't feel like I've not got enough room so that's really good it came together easily I haven't done the burrito method I think in terms of a dress before so that was a new finish for me and I really enjoyed it the instructions were really clear uh, and so that went together really well and I made it in this Merak cotton lawn from um, the fabric godmother unfortunately she's out of stock of that now but I will put a link to her shop below because she always has beautiful fabrics and beautiful cotton lawns so it's worth going and having a little look to see what she's got in stock 
But yes, I really like that. And I think because of the cotton lawn, it will be fine to wear through the summer, perhaps not on the hottest days. But I did wear it in the garden the other day and it, it's so floaty and the fabric is so soft that actually it was fine in the warm weather um, and gives me a bit more protection from the sun, which is great. So that was the uh, Davenport dress by Friday Pattern Company. My next make was a fibre mood pattern and it's in the latest magazine, which is this one. And it was the fibre mood Maya dress. Now I ummed and ahed about which size to make this in and I wasn't sure whether I'd make the size 10 or the size 12, but in the end I decided to go for the size 12 as it just gave me a little bit more ease across the bust and the waist and I'm really glad I did. Um, it fits beautifully and I'll pop a picture in here. Uh, if you're interested in more details on this pattern and how it all comes together, I actually did a sew along video for this one. So I'll pop a card in and please do go across and watch that if you're interested in how to make this one. It's a really lovely make. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was my first fiber mood pattern, so I was it was all sort of new to me in terms of tracing out the pattern and how that all worked. But it was such a lovely pattern to make, so I will definitely be making more fiber mood patterns in the future. So here is the dress. Um, <laughs> it's so bright. It's like wearing a rainbow. Um, but I absolutely love it. I think what drew me to the pattern were these amazing voluminous sleeves with this beautiful cuff, which is finished with a facing. So you sew a facing onto the cuff and then it turns onto the inside and just pull, holds all those pleats together so beautifully. Uh, and then the sleeve is actually that the volume is given with these beautiful pleats, which you can choose how to sort of arrange those uh, on the top of the sleeve and the bottom. I put this pleat on the outside of the fabric and then this pleat at the bottom I turned onto the inside just to give some of that volume at the top but really bring it in around my arm. So that's what I chose to do there. The dress itself has fish eye darts to give it shape so the whole of the front piece is cut in one and the whole of the back is cut in one piece. Um, so it's actually not very many pieces for the pattern. You've got the front and the back, the sleeves and the bias binding for the neck and the pockets and that's it. So it's actually quite quite simple in terms of pattern pieces but you do need quite a lot of fabric because obviously you have to get the long front and back pieces out of one length of fabric. Um, I did make mine slightly shorter because I didn't want it to be quite so long. I felt like there was so much volume in the dress that I needed to shorten it a little bit. So I did shorten the pattern pieces slightly but still needed quite a bit of fabric. And I made it out of this Narita Hansen large print gingham. I think this colorway is called Dark Summer. And I bought it from the Village Haberdashery. And unfortunately, she's run out of that now. But she does stock a lot of other Narita Hansen prints. But I did find this somewhere else online. I can't remember where now. But I'll link it in the description box below. And I found it online in the Light Summer print or colorway. Which has still got this rainbow effect. It's just a slightly lighter... Um, colours rather than these big bold ones but I really really love it and I'm looking forward to wearing it outside at some garden parties <laughs> over the summer and um, it just it's such a happy dress and it came together so beautifully I can really recommend it. Um, it is finished with an invisible zip at the back so that does have that in terms of being able to get it on because it is quite nicely fitted through the waist because of the fisheye darts that makes it really fit beautifully over the waist and the hips so you do need the invisible zip to get into that. <laughs> I think that's all really to say about it and the neckline is finished with bias binding which you flip to the outside. I think perhaps on hindsight if I were to make this again in this fabric I might flip the binding into the inside uh, just to slightly give it a cleaner finish with the rainbow colours but I don't mind it. It's happy and it looks gorgeous on uh, with those happy sort of bright colours around the neckline. Almost looks like a necklace really. So that is my Fiber mood, Maya. The next make that I'd like to share with you is what I'm wearing today, and that is the Deer and Doe Orchid Day dress. So I'll show you the nine drawings, and I made this version, obviously the dress version. And I think in my video previously I talked about the sizes again, but I wasn't sure what I was going to do exactly with my sizes because I have got a smaller top half than bottom half. So in the end, I decided I wanted to make sure I had enough coverage here on the bodice. So I went with a size 38 bodice and I graded that to a size 40 across my waist. So I made the waistband here 
I cut a size 40 waistband and then I graded the bodice from a 38 here at the bust line and then just grade it out to the 40 over here at the waistline and that worked perfectly it's, it came together really well um, I had no problems with putting that together so you do have these bridal buttons at the front but if I'm honest I don't ever undo those because you don't need them to get the dress on and off because there is an invisible zip here down the side seam um, which was the pattern instructions were fine um, for the most part and the invisible zip went in really nicely it's just on this side here and it goes down to about your hip line here um, yeah so the invisible zip went in really easily that was really nicely um, the instructions were really nice for that then for the bridle buttons the instructions were to use um, elastic loops which I didn't have and just looked really fiddly so what I did instead was I just made some thread loops uh, on a piece of fabric and then inserted that instead and I'm really happy with how they came out in actual fact you could you don't really need buttons there I never undo them to get the dress on and off because I just use the invisible zip so you could just sew this bodice together at the front and put the buttons on as a as a feature rather than as a needing to be used practically I just used some buttons that I had in my button box that I think I'd cut off another ready-to-wear dress that anyway I used the buttons from that and yeah I think you can see the sleeves here they finish just above my elbow they're finished off with elastic they've got a lovely puff to them and the bodice itself is gathered at the front into the shoulder seams and then gathered slightly into the waistband I'll put a picture up here so you can see the full dress it does take up quite a lot of fabric so I had about a meter of the green and pink gingham and I had a very small amount of the yellow gingham because I only used that for the waistband and I needed about two meters two and a half meters of the blue gingham for the skirt because it is a midi length skirt it is an a-line skirt it's a gathered skirt so it needed quite a lot of fabric so it is a fabric hungry pattern and I do cut very very carefully I try and get as much um, out of each bit of fabric as I can and I did not have a lot left over the fabric itself, um, I bought four different colours of yarn dyed gingham from Minerva Craft. Um, I saw a beautiful dress on uh, the high street that I just fell in love with and I wanted to kind of see if I could make it myself. And so yeah, I chose four different colours of gingham. It's a bit of a, this online shopping is so tricky, but I was so glad when they arrived because the four colours I think work really beautifully together. Um, so yes, so I used the four different yarn dyed ginghams. The only really tricky bit, see if I can stand up and show you, was gathering the skirt into the waistband. So it is a lined bodice and the waistband also obviously is lined. And when you try to gather the skirt into the lined waistband, because the bodice opens, it didn't actually, I could sew it on into the waistband, but then I couldn't actually close the waistband over the skirt to enclose it in the waistband if that makes sense I'm not sure I'm explaining it very well it was basically this part here because the bodice is in two pieces but the skirt is in one piece it didn't really work when you were trying to enclose it from the inside of the dress um, I ended up having to make a small slit in the skirt and then enclosing it in each side of the bodice before kind of sewing a few stitches up into the waistband to really secure that um, if you're making it yourself and you're confused and you want more of an explanation do send me a comment and I can try and explain it better I read the instructions so many times to check if I'd done something wrong I looked at a whole bunch of the Instagram posts about the dress to see if anyone else had had the same issue and I couldn't find anyone else so perhaps it was something that I did in terms of making the pattern but I couldn't quite work out how to how you could sew the one layer of fabric here into the two different sides of the bodice without doing some sort of creative cutting so apart from that small moment of confusion the pattern came together really beautifully I'm really pleased with the finish on the inside all of the seams are enclosed because of the way the bodice was put together so it's really lovely to wear the fabric is light and airy and actually cutting the 38 here still gives me plenty of ease for the summer which is nice because I don't want anything too closely fitted in the summertime when it's hot and the skirt is just beautifully floaty so I think this is probably one of my favorite makes from this month um, the deer and doe orchidee dress 
I did manage to squeeze in one more dress for myself this uh, May, and that was the Hazel Dress by Rosary Apparel. I did mention this one on my May plans as well, but I wasn't sure if I'd have enough time to get it sewn up. But in the end, I just was so in love with the fabric, I had to, I had to give it a go. So the rosary dress is a beautiful, it's got a beautiful square necked bodice with little spaghetti straps. And I really love the shape of this. It really knits you in at the waist and then um, a lovely A-line skirt flows from your natural waist. And it's either you can make it a knee length or a midi length. Um, or obviously anything in between, depending on your preferences. I often wear this one with a t-shirt underneath, just for a little bit more coverage across my shoulders, and it looks really cute like that too. Well, obviously in the hottest of weathers, you can wear it with nothing underneath except for the dress. So yes, I made this version out of this beautiful Makawa cotton, and it's from there beside the sea range. So you will have seen this on my May plans video, so do go and have a look at that. I used the clouds print for the bodice, and then I used this beautiful border print. I just think the colours in that are so beautiful and vibrant. So I used the border print for the skirt. So obviously I was limited by the length or the width of that border print as to how long my skirt could be. Now you can see for the eagle eyed among you, I have not hemmed it <laughs> yet. You can see the overlocker threads and everything. Um, and I'll come on to that in a minute. The dress itself, it has lovely darts here at the bottom of the bodice to just give it some shape and then obviously bust darts as well. And there are similar darts in the back piece and it just gives it a beautiful shape. There is a tutorial on Rosary Apparel's YouTube as well. If you want to, you can leave out these darts here at the bottom of the bodice and on the back. And that just gives it a slightly less cinched in look, slightly more relaxed look at the waist, which is nice to just have another option if you'd like it. There are pockets, which is always a win. Lovely deep pockets. And I just made them out of some more of that border print fabric because I just wanted to make sure the colour blend it in if you got a peek at that po pocket. So yes, I've made this dress quite a few times now, so this one came together really, really quickly. I love the way that the straps just go into the top of that bodice there, um, and it is finished at the back with an invisible zip. Now the bodice has a um, facing, it's finished with a facing, which I'm just finishing sewing in, and yeah, I think that's probably it's a very straightforward construction, which is just really a satisfying sew. So after doing the Orchid Day dress, which was a bit more involved, it was nice to just do a quick sew of a pattern I'm really familiar with, which has just lovely finishings, but it's quite a straightforward and very satisfying sew. So this was a really fun one to make. So yes, I did mention the length of the skirt. I will put... Oh, those colours. I will put in a picture here. Um, rather than just waving the fabric around of the length of it on me. It's fine, I think, for a day at the beach, but I would like to get a bit more wear out of it than just a day at the beach here and there. So, and also running around after three small children, I'm just a bit concerned that um, it's just a little short for me. So I have actually ordered some more fabric from the Beside the Sea range from the Stitching Post, which is where I got these fabrics initially. And the fabric itself is just this portion of the print from the border print it's just the beach huts and some umbrellas and some beach balls and things like that so I'll probably just add um, a panel here and finish off the hem I don't think it needs very much maybe two or three inches not a huge amount but I'm toying with the idea of just doing it as sort of a gentle ruffle um, just to give a little bit more of a, a summery floaty feel to the dress um, but let me know should I just do it like a plain hem band or should I do a bit of a ruffle across the bottom of the dress? Do let me know what you think in the comments below. But that was my last make for myself this month, the Rosary Apparel Hazel Dress. The last thing I made this month was a dress for my daughter, and it was the Peony Patterns Periwinkle Dress in a beautiful cotton jersey from Amy Elizabeth Fabrics. And this is it here. Of course, I couldn't resist adding a label. It says, I am... What is it? I'm smart, I am kind, I am brave, I am me. <laughs> I just love that. And that is by Little Rosy Cheeks. So I'll link her in the description box below as well. But this is just the most vibrantly beautiful 
bright summery fabric from Amy Elizabeth Fabrics and I just fell in love with it. Um, and then when I saw this pattern come up on Peony Patterns, I thought it would work really well with that fabric for a little summer jersey dress for my daughter. She gets a lot of wear out of these jersey dresses because they're just light and breezy and easy to pop on in the summer. It has got beautiful puff sleeves with the little cuff band on the end, just to really bring in that puff. And then it's just a very simple square necked bodice gathered into a circle skirt. Now the pattern itself gives you lots of different options. You can just make a simple plain sort of a-line skirt, you can make a circle skirt, you can make a tiered skirt and then there is also the option to do um, a gently curved neckline rather than a square neckline. I did really like the square neckline so I did make that um, and I made it in a size 3. She's about to turn 2 and I always like to make children's clothes at least one size bigger than they are just so that they get room, you know, they can wear them. This will be sort of a more maxi length on her this summer but next summer hopefully she can wear it again and it will be a slightly more knee length dress. <laughs> the only problem I've had is that this neckline at the front for her now is quite low um, because she's only little. So what I've actually done is turn it around and so <laughs> she's just been wearing it backwards which actually is fine. The sleeves didn't have a front and back from memory they just went in. Anyway they look fine and I've just been putting it on her backwards because this square neck is obviously slightly higher and it doesn't matter if it's got a slightly lower back at the moment and then as she gets older I'll put it back around the right way again and she can have the lower front and the slightly higher back. Um, so yes that, that was quite funny I hadn't really thought about that when I decided to make the square neck dress but it looks so lovely and floaty on her I'll hopefully have popped some pictures in of her wearing it in the garden so that you can see what it looks like on. It's just a lovely floaty dress and I love circle skirts on little girls they're perfect for twirling um, and she tends to do quite a lot of that. <laughs> So yes, that was the Peony Patterns Periwinkle Dress in this beautiful, bright, summery cotton jersey from Amy Elizabeth Fabrics. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed seeing all those things that I made in May. Um, do comment below which was your favourite, and if you have any other questions about the fabrics that I used, or if you want any more detail about the patterns themselves, the sizes, and all the other sort of details do pop along and see my May plans video or pop a comment in the box below and I'll happily answer if I can. Uh, thank you again for those of you who have subscribed to my channel. If you did enjoy watching today please do give me a thumbs up and if you haven't yet do subscribe. Uh, it's great to have you um, here on my sewing journey and I look forward to hearing from you in the comments below. I hope you're enjoying the sunshine, or if you're in the colder climes, I hope that it's not too cold for you. I hope that you're staying safe and staying happy, and I will see you in the next vlog. Bye! -bye.